Welcome to the channel and to my latest Horus Heresy Battle Report. This time it's Loyalist Empress Children versus Traitor World Eaters. It doesn't take long for the World Eaters to start walking the Crimson Path. So here we are, a few months after the Heresy, going up against some Traitor World Eaters that are finally giving in to Khorne. Khan is here. But he's lost to the Butcher's Nails in this one. He will not be the Warlord. Instead, we have a Praetor leading some ravening madmen, the Red Butchers. And standing against them will be Loyalist Empress Children, survivors of Ispan III. This is a million point battle of Horus Heresy. In the distance, Titans are blaring their war horns. The skies are ripped with fire and nuclear ordnance is firing across the horizon. But here, we're fighting across this avenue here, this avenue of lies. And we're playing lengthways, and the mission that we're playing is Onslaught. This lasts for six turns, and quite simply the way it works is after you deploy all the armies down, one person will put an objective in the opponent's deployment zone, and vice versa, objective in each deployment zone. And if you control that objective at the end of the game, you get five points. There's also an extra point for killing more, an extra point for killing the Warlord, an extra point for killing stuff in turn one. So the way this normally works is if someone takes the objective in their opponent's deployment zone, they'll get five points and it doesn't matter about any of the other conditions. They will tend to win the game. But if no one gets either objective, then it'll come down to killing more. It'll come down to Warlord or if both of us get each objective, then it'll come down to Warlord, it'll come down to killing more. I love Onslaught because it tends to be very close game. You've just got to go for it. It's absolutely about stealing that objective while keeping your objective safe. And I've set up this lovely table, as you can see in front of you. The battle mat is from urbanmats.com, but all the scenery that you see on the table, the lovely bunkers, the statues, the tank traps, the buildings, everything. It's from marchofwar.co.uk. Hi, James, from marchofwar.co.uk. Hi, Winters, how are we doing? You're back again. I'm back again. And you brought a lovely army with you. I have brought a lovely army So with behind me. the scenes, because I'm collecting loads and loads of Horus Heresy All stuff. the armies. You commission painted, like, 5,000 points of World Eaters for Alex SEO. I did indeed, yes. And he's not here today. He's not. But you brought the army down. I did. So I can give it to him, because he only lives down the road. So I get to see his army before him. You do. And I'm going to play with his army before him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to christen it. Well, you love your world eaters. I do love my world You've eaters. You've got like 100,000 points of world I, eaters. No, not quite, but it's a lot. A it's, lot, a lot. Yeah. I've not put it in recently, but I don't know, like 35,000 points of world eaters, something like okay. that. Okay. And uh, Lots. You, I remember you, you set this one up and said, did you know Alex's list is really dirty? <laughs> and the answer to that is yes. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I filthy. do. Should we take a look? You're like, make a list. And I sort of went through, I was like, how do I make a fun list? I can't make a fun list. There's no making a fun list. It's filthy. Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. <laughs> and this is 3,000 points worth of traitorous world eaters. Yes, indeed. You picked a right of war. Yes. Called, uh, it's not called uh, Crimson Path. Crimson Path. That's yes. the one. So any infantry on the table ignores the first wound that they take per phase. Yep. That shooting phase, fight phase, whatever. Basically, if I want to wound the big stuff, I'm going to have to shoot my bolt guns before my last cannons. Yep. It doesn't affect the vehicles or the dreadnoughts. It's no. just the infantry. And that's pretty nice. Throughout the whole battle, ignore the it first is. wound comes through. Yeah. And it does something with rampages. Rampages gives them line. Brilliant. Because there's score. a big squad of 15, big squad of 15, and all the despoilers. You've got lots of lots line. Because yeah. in games of Horus Heresy, line is obsec, basically. They're the ones that score. Everything else can deny except vehicles, but they can't score. Yeah. So you've got a lot of stuff that is going to be... going to score points. Hey, hey, here's a, they're going to be rampaging up the battle grid. They, they are going to be rampaging up the battle grid. And, and on, onslaughting onwards. Onslaughted <laughs> onwards. So... Tell people what World Eaters do. What's their special so, role? So World Eaters get an additional attack on the charge. Yes. So they're getting plus one attack for charging, then right. plus one attack for being World Eaters. Yes. Um, and then, obviously, extra weapons for more more attacks. The Praetor. Yes. Hello, Praetor. Hello, Praetor. Um, so he has a couple of things. He's got the Butcher's Claws. Right. Which is his Warlord trait. Okay. Which gives him plus one strength. For the remainder, for that, and then he gets an additional attack for everybody in the squad. 
Right. So the whole squad get plus one attack. So that's extra attacks. Extra attacks. And so then for him to be able to go with the Red Butchers, because they're Ravening Madmen, right. you have to give him the Berserker trait, right. which gives him an additional attack. More attacks. More attacks. So, so he's a Praetor with four attacks, with that extra attack for his Warlord trait is five. Five. Two Power Claws, seven. Plus one for being a Berserker. Plus one for World Eaters, plus one, one on the charge. charge. He's got ten, ten attacks, attacks on the charge. Ten attacks. <laughs> and plus one strength. And plus one strength. And it gives all the red butchers... Plus one attack. Extra attacks as well. Yeah. And, okay, so he's running around with a unit of red butchers. Yeah. They've got, like, two attacks, plus the two axes, three attacks, plus him, four attacks, plus... Oh, my yeah, word. Yeah, like six attacks They're going to hit yeah. like a freight train. Yeah. In there, I noticed there's only one claw. One claw. The sergeant's got the fist and the chain fist. Okay. The rest of them all got the power axes. So they will be... Fighting last, last, yeah, but they'll be fighting last with the bajillion attacks and cataphracty armor. Okay, <laughs> uh, world eaters also have a special reaction, everyone gets a special reaction. Yeah, so, our special one is when you shoot at me, yeah. I can pop my reaction and I get a five up feel no pain. And then, once you finish shooting at me, I can charge you. Brilliant. So, if you get within charge range, yeah, charge, charge <laughs> yeah. In we okay. Go. What else we've we got here? So then we've got four units of despoilers up the middle. Okay. Um, we've got two with claw. Two on the sergeants. We've got two with claws, and then we've got two, two with power fists. Nice vexillas all round. Vexillas all round. People will notice that there's chain axes all across despoiler squads, which you normally can't bring. Why are there chain axes? Because world eaters can do. I think it's called savage fever. Or right. Fervor. Fervor. There you go. Um, and so, yeah, I can exchange chain swords for chain axes for free. For free? For free. Everywhere. And the spoilers, two attacks base with their loadout. They will get four attacks on the charge because World Eaters... Look, does a pistol count as a second cloak combat weapon? Yes. So it gets me an additional one there. Yeah, yes. so they're dirty. Aren't and then they've got Spite of the Legion. So if you charge a unit that's falling back or pinned or chosen warriors, you get an extra mm, attack an as extra, well. extra attack. <laughs> they also the have Heart of the Legion as well, which is the one that most troops get. But uh, yeah, to spoilers with free chain axes all round. Yep. And these all score. Yep. Then your rampages score. So we've got the rampages on foot on the left. Okay. Who have got Khan attached with them. There's Khan. Hi, There's Khan. Khan. Khan is an absolute beat stick, as we know, but he's he lost to the Crimson Nails and this one, the Butcher's Nails. Yep. And rampages, stupid number of attacks, but the main thing is you put Phalanx Blades in that Phalanx. squad. Yep. They're all phalanx blades. This is what we were saying about you not being able to make it not a dirty list. It's just all phalanx blades. Phalanx blades rends on a four. Yeah. Which basically means it doesn't matter if you're attacking dreadnoughts, whatever you're attacking, it's a fours or AP2. Yeah. Brilliant. And auto wound. Yeah. And auto wound. Scary. Yeah. Um, so they're, blo they're going in the Spartan that's behind. That flare right. shield? Flare shielded Spartan, yeah. You have to have, have to. And the shield. melter on the top. Nice, okay. Um, that's the heavy support choice. For, I'm only so one of the downsides of the one that makes my rampages into scoring options is yes. I can only have one heavy support. Okay, that's my heavy support. Okay. Uh, then we've got another unit of rampages at the back, okay. all with jump packs and more phalanx blades. Brilliant. So um, jump packs, movement twelve. It also gives you plus three when you charge. Yep. And they've all got flowers, please. <laughs> yep. And then we've got two combat dreadnoughts. Alex is an absolute dirty, <laughs> dirty filthy, man. isn't he? he is. Uh, yeah. Okay, two comp melters in the fists. Melters in the fists. One of them's got the I can't remember what it's called with the chain with the chain swords on the side of it. I think it's literally called a chain fist. Okay, so you've got right. a chain fist and the normal and the normal fist, fist in case you want to chop open tanks. Yeah, and the or... other one's just two fists. Okay, and then three individual saber strike tanks. Tanks. Right. They're called saber strike squadrons, but then yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah it's three fast attacks. So you can run around now. Only twenty four inch range. Yep. Yeah. But you put the neutron beam on there. Well. They're fast, yeah. strength 10, yeah. AP1, and they've got shock pulse. Yeah. So if you score a penetrating hit or a wound on anything, then next turn it's snap firing. Yeah. It's also concussive. It's a hit or miss thing. Three is to hit, one shot. But if it does hit, it can lock down and prevent even super heavies yeah. from uh, firing at full ballistic skill. And people might be thinking, well, why are there those in the... the in, in World Eaters. World Eaters loved their big guns. They do. Even in 40k, they've still yeah. got Predators. It's the pre the, the, the Predator thing. is the iconic one. The Predator, I yeah. would say, is that it's their favourite. But yeah. 
I really like these. I think they're. I've added some to my world eaters since seeing nice. um, Alex getting some, and they are nice little tanks. Yeah, they I like zipping around. Anything really big, like these guns or uh, neutron lasers on Sakarans yeah. or assault tanks with multi melters and las cannons. They loved all the biggest possible guns they could find to crack open the stuff. Things that aren't necessarily world eaters are light skimmers and fast things zipping around. All the finesse well, even stuff. That, they had quite a lot of the jet bikes. There's quite they a did. Lot. They, they, there was a special name for that. I can't remember what they were. Well, they're not the Red Hand Assault Squad because that's the other guys. But there was some guys that were on jet bikes. Yes. In one of them. So, yeah. I mean, I think like early on. A lot of the legions had a bit of everything, didn't they? That was the whole point. Like they all have a favoured way of war. Yes. But they all have everything. Yes, they so. all have everything. All a favoured way of war. Uh, it's just yeah, the world eaters really liked big guns and yeah, choppy choppy. Yeah. So this list is gonna be absolutely brutal. Basically, if you make a charge against any of my empress children, those units of empress children should die. Yeah. But empress children have a trick up their sleeve. Let's go and have a look. Should mention that you did all the bases as well. Yeah, all the bases, You're obviously. A talented mofo. Thank you very much. The Jim. Empress Children party trick is you know, you've got what plus one attack when you charge. Yeah. I've got plus one initiative when I charge. Which is huge. Which means that because uh, in Heresy you fight in initiative order. So, for example, Primarchs and Praetors have higher initiative, so they will always fight in a combat. Regardless if you charge them first, they'll always fight before you get to hit. And then you make your way down all the way to the unwieldy stuff like hammers and fists and things, and that'll, that'll strike last. Yeah. So if I charge you, I fancy my chances. Yeah. You charge me, you fancy your... Yeah, yeah. it's going to be gonna an gonna absolute blood rough. I don't, know, I don't know if we're going to make it to turn <laughs> six, to be fair. Um, this is two nine 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 points of Pride of the Legion. The way Pride of the Legion works is you take Vet Squads as line and you can only take one heavy and you can't take any allies. So this Land Raiders, the Land Raiders back there are a squadron and going inside them are two units of veterans and they score, which means their weapon skill is high. They've got two wounds. They're nice and choppy. Uh, both of the sergeants, both of the squads are the same. So you're looking at a sergeant with a hammer and artificer armor, and in the squad is five charitable weapons and three sets of claws, and that's cut and paste. And yeah, the Land Raiders are WYSIWYG with the LAS cannons, with the multi melters, with all the toys. So they score, they go busting forward. Along the front, we have three units of troops. Uh, Vexilla's in the squads and artificer armor and power weapons. He's got a Phoenix blade. Basically, you know, you can put chain axes wherever you put chainsaws for free. Yeah. I can check, swap, swap Phoenix weapons for power weapons for free. Right, and, cool. Uh, you only really get it on characters, but what it does is exactly the same stats, only that on sixes as well as rend, it also murderous strike. Nice. So that's quite nice. And uh, this unit of tactical marines over here, I have paid for the upgrade for everyone to have chainsaws. Uh, leading the charge is this Praetor here, and he is a Martyr of Istvan. That is my okay. Warlord trait, which means him and any unit that he joins gets plus one to hit. And he's going to be coming with a retinue. So okay. that retinue scores, because I've got the Legion standard there, and that retinue will be hitting on plus one, and these are Phoenix Blade Terminators. So you can make the Phoenix Blade Terminators into a retinue for your Praetor? Yes. For your Terminator? Ah, right, yes. okay. Because, um, well, all Praetors can bring command squads along, yeah. or normally of five, and if you bring a banner, it makes them scoring. Yeah. Uh, but World Eaters can bring a retinue of ten instead of five. Empress Children, yeah. Uh, Empress Children, sorry. And they can take a Storm Eagle gunship as dedicated, cool. so which is what That's was done nice. here. Um, their initiative, five standard with those Phoenix Power Spears because uh, they give them reach one. But they are AP3. So I'm AP3 in close combat. You're AP2 in close combat at low initiative because axes. I'm AP3 in close combat so at high initiative, so I'll be striking first. But sixes, rend, and murder. Yeah. Murder strike, so they're brutal. And they score. And yeah, Storm Eagle gunship with the LAS cannons, with the multi melters. It could come in in turn three. It could come in in turn four. I'd really like it to come in in turn two. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to be jumping in there. Um, Phoenix sword on this guy as well. I've given him a Magni Combi Bolter, which is a disintegrator, one-shot disintegrator. We'll see it. if that goes off. It can be quite juicy. Oh, and I didn't mention as well, uh, Empress Children Advanced Reaction. Yeah. So your advanced reaction is I shoot you, you get feel no pain, you charge me. Yeah. 
my advanced reaction is you declare a charge to me and I go, ah, uh-uh, I charge you. Right. And nice. we do a roll off and the winner of the roll off then charges. Yeah. If I lose the roll off, it's fine. I just overwatch you. But uh, cool. yeah, I really want to beat you on that roll off because if I charge you higher initiative, I get to chop them first. Yeah. Uh, I have got a unit of 10 LAS cannon devastators here. Uh, it's just, well, the main reason why I brought it is because there isn't actually quite a lot of long range DAC in this army. And I didn't know what you're bringing. I didn't know if it was going to be the two Spartans yeah. or the Leviathan or da da da. So I thought, like, I'm going to need some gun support. I haven't put an Armistos with them today, which makes them a bit broken, but still 10 LAS cannons. Very nice. They can stay back. They can lay down some fire support. And I've got two Dreadnoughts, Melters in the fists, Gravis Melters in their left arms there. It's the cheapest loadout with the Gravis Melters. And I don't know why, because it's, it's, it's brutal. They are very, very brutal. Uh, but much less attacks than your world eaters when you go charging in. So you've got six scoring things. I've got six scoring things as well. All my troops score, they score, and the vet score. Cool. Um, so this is going to be very interesting. I've also got some mobility, but we're playing lengthways. I'm also going up against world eaters, so I don't... Hmm. <sighs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, let's go on to deployment. One minute, one minute, one minute. Uh, we just realized that because I brought the Devastator along, I have got a couple of heavies. <laughs> <laughs> so no Pride of the Legion right of war. Instead, the Land Raiders, which have already started placing down on the battle grid, will be individual units. Uh, so that means I fill out my three heavy slots. So instead of six troops, I'm down to four troops, but that's okay. Because these guys are definitely going to come in on the turn that I want them on. Oh, right totally now. turn five. No, we're, no, we're going to continue six. with deployment. I'm confident. I'm confident. And we're deployed with this 3,000 point game of Onslaught playing Hammer of Anvil deployment. And here are the World Eaters that have embraced the Crimson Path, uh, making all of those Rampages scoring and making them ignore the first wound that comes through facing the Loyalist Empress Children without any right of war, which is fine. Everything's going to be fine. The Flyer's going to come and zipping on and winning me the game, I think. I put... You stagger. This is the only game in Horus Heresy where you stagger deployment. Yeah. You go, I go. You go, I go. So you get some feel of what's about to happen. And the objective I want to take is down there. And you've got Rampages to the left of it, Rampages to the right of it, inside the Spartan. And then there's troops. Troops. Troops, tr troops everywhere. Troops, all troops over. everywhere. The sabers are scattered around, and you've got nothing in reserve. Nothing in reserve. And why are the red butchers all the way back here with your warlord? Because they look like they'd be a good idea to stop you scoring. Okay. Really? So they. Okay. They're yeah, going to yeah. stand there like a brick, basically. They're going to get on that objective. Yeah. Shred anything that comes near them. Right. And because they're slow. They are slow as so, well. In Cataphracty, you can't run. No. But you can deny. Yeah. You can't take, but you can deny. I obviously have got my flyer in reserve. The you flyer that's not coming on until turn five. It's coming six. on in turn two. I've got troops here, troops here, and troops down here with the dreadnoughts. And you placed your onslaught objective down in that ruin over here. These objective markers are also available from March of War. Dot UK. Um, my vets now are going to be more denial type units, which is fine. And then I've got the las cannons which have got commanding views of the battlefield in the ruin at the very back. And I think I should mention as well that you're going first. Because the way it works in Heresy is you drop first, go first. Yep. Unless I manage to steal from you. You don't want to steal, though. I do want to no, steal. I'm pretty sure you don't. You're some, the good guys. Some people say the stealing is bad, but I think stealing is great. And the Emperor's pretty dirty, so... What do you mean? He's not <laughs> dirty. He's got a great hygiene thing. Oh, he's not you dead know, yet. He's not dead yet, exactly. <laughs> he's a pretty pure kind of guy. Nothing dodgy about him whatsoever. On a six, I get to go first. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hey, no winter's head. No winter's head. It is world eaters. Turn one. Here we are after the movement phase for the world eaters. Lots of running happening, but the dreadnoughts and the red butchers staying back and uh, keeping an eye on the home field objective here, along with this little... Saber assault tank yeah. down here. I should mention all the sabers also have Volkite culverins on top. Down this flank, we had some running forwards and we had some running forward with the rampages with jump packs, which are very, very scary. A full unit of 15 there. And the objective that they want to take 
is just down here. So I reacted with this unit of Empress children and moved towards them. The way I figure is they're dead anyway. There's no point in running backwards because you can catch me. You've got Warhawk junk packs. You can go a long way. So they might as well sell their souls and go charging into I'll be you back a bit further. and try and hurt one or two of them before uh, before you start sowing a red mist down this side of the battle grid. Saber can fire in that way as well. The other unit of Rampagers inside the Spartan for now, pushing up the battle grid. Remember all the Rampager units score. And then we have troops that ran and troops that ran and a Sabre tank there. And we're going to start off the shooting phase with that Sabre tank threading the needle one shot into that land raider there. I'm not reacting. You need a three to hit. You need a three. First shot with the big gun. No. Nope. And, and it misses. Doesn't it get hot? It does get hot. So on a one, two, you take a wound. Mm. You don't take a wound. From one Sabre tank across to the other Sabre tank. Uh, you're firing the Volkite at full ballistic skill down to this unit of troops down here. So it is five shots on the Volkite car. We're in hitting on threes. And we have four hits. And it's strength six, so you're wounding on twos. And you've got three wounds. Uh, Artificer already? No, let's just do three up saves. I failed two of them. Volkites have deflagrate, so you can do two, two more. more wounds. Which wound, and then two more three up saves, and in total, I lose three marines. And we can snap fire the main neutron gun in as well because you move flat out. Well, yeah. not flat out, but you but moved at moved. cruising speed, so you yes. need a six with this one, and yep. it misses. Now, interestingly enough, there's only one last gun, or one last unit that the world eaters have range and line of sight for, and it is this Spartan firing everything at that land raider. Yeah, so I'm definitely shrouding because I'm not getting cover to this. Yeah. And you've got five twin link las cannons coming in, which will hit on threes. And twin linked in heresies reroll hit, not reroll wounds. And on the table clip. They all hit. They all hit. Strength nine, front armor fourteen, fives glance, six is pen. Rerolling for And you have a sunder. That's two penetrating hits so far. Okay, two penetrating hits. Two five up shrouding. I fail them both. <laughs> what does that do on the damage characteristic? One at a time or both at yeah, once? You know both at a time. They're a single thing. Slow That's dead. It's dead. It's it blows up. Woo! We've blown it up straight away. Cool. The melter was going in as well. <laughs> the explosion range is four inches, which will uh, glance the tank nearby on a six. It doesn't glance it. And there's a bunch of troops hiding behind, which are also going to get hit. Then at the end of the shooting phase as well, I suffered 25% casualties. So then they take a leadership test, which they fail. <laughs> My vets are falling back four inches. That is now the end of turn one for the world. He just said, move forward, already destroyed one of my transports. Let's find out if the Empress Children respond in Empress Children turn one. At the end of the Empress Children movement phase, the uh, Land Raider rumbles up the street down this avenue of death, while around here there's lots of reacting to try and hold on to the home field objective. A unit of Rampages in front, the spoilers behind, and the Tactical Marines are standing on just this side of the doorway, and yes, I'm going to charge some Rampages. I mean, they're dead anyway. Or I could stand there and wait for you to charge me, potentially. Anyway, Dreadnought move forward as well. The second Dreadnought move forward as well. And this unit of troops, that's the one that got injured in the explosion, ran across through the tank, tank traps. So we're not shooting with that unit this turn because they ran. But they'll have a good field of fire onto the objective that the world leaders want to take. Uh, around the other side of the battle grid, I've got another unit of troops over here which can pour firepower down into this despoiler squad. And I need to test the regroup with my uh, veteran squad here, looking for an eight. And they fail. And they continue to fall back <laughs> towards the end of the battle grid. They're out of here. I think they're just tactically repositioning. We're going <laughs> to regroup next turn and then move through forward to help take that objective no. over there. That's definitely what's going to happen. Uh, okay, so we're on to the shooting phase, and what I'm going to do is fire everything from the Land Raider down into that Sabre there. Not evading this shot, because you're worried about the Devastators, and you can only evade one shot. Here's the Gravis Lance Cannons that aren't twin-linked, and they hit on threes. Here's the twin-linked one in the nose, 
which is to unlinked. Strength nine versus side armor of 11 with Sunder. You can reroll glances to pants. So in the end, four penetrating hits. Four five up cover saves before the melter comes flying in there. And that's three penetrating hits, which will be enough to kill it. But do I detonate it on sixes? No. So let's see if the melter detonates, which is twin linked and it's strength eight. No. So it just becomes a smoking wreck. You kill one thing in one turn. I kill one thing in one turn. OK, so the Devastator team are going to shoot the second saber. The plan here is, you see, you get one point for each thing that you kill in turn, in turn one. one no. So if you don't get the objective and I don't get the objective, then you kill one thing. If I can kill two I things, you're this could be a game winning mm -hmm. move, firing at the saber. So do you want to shroud this yeah, one? I will shroud this You will one. shroud this one. Yeah. OK, I'll shoot Coco. Uh, threes to hit you with Laz cannons. Four of them managed to hit. It's against your front armor of 12 now, though. So I need threes and I can re roll because of Sunder. So two glances, two pens. Six up cover saves for the glances. Two on the glances. Okay. And, and then you can shroud that because you're shroud on a five. five. Nope. A glance gets through. And then two six up cover saves on the pen. And then oh, shrouding that shroud. one. Oh no, yes. so in the end, only one oh. glancing hit comes through to the Sabre and it's down to two hull points remaining. Didn't work, but it was a nice idea. Meanwhile, we come over here and uh, this unit of troops are going to fire everything at the Rampages right in front. Now, because I want to charge, we're only firing bolt pistols, which hit on threes and so I'm going wound to on. Use my special reaction. Okay, what's your special reaction? When you shoot me, yes, I get a five or feel no pain. Yes, and then I can charge you. Brilliant. <laughs> Force to wound. Three wounds. Uh, one minute. You only take two wounds because you ignore the first, the first one, one before one any one, yeah. rolls are made. Uh, so you make both of them. And then you charge. Just don't get snake eyes because you're about to go into terrain. And you don't get snake eyes and I shouldn't have shot those rampages because now they come charging in. Or maybe I should have shot them because this way you've used, used your advanced reaction in yeah. turn one. It's gone. Mind you, I was lining up my dreadnought so I could shoot at them as well. Yeah, you see, I have a cunning plan. Was, was stop it's the dreadnought no, shooting no, no. at them. Still turn one, mate. Yeah. I'm about to kill a unit in turn one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the thing. That's the thing. And I lined up both of the Dreadnoughts to fire in, and now they don't have line of sight or range or anything. And I lined up this unit so they could fire in, and they can't fire so in as well. my unit as well. Who said that the uh, World Eaters can't be sneaky? Snicker, snicker. Mind you, that isn't that sneaky. That's no, more like, like a... Yeah. That's exactly what it was, yeah. Okay, so we're coming over here. Instead, we're going to fire this tactical squad in at the Despoiler squad down there. Yep. And I hit on threes, wounding on fours for four wounds, four three up saves, and two of them die no screaming. Lie. An interest, and well, one of, those one of them die screaming, yeah. yeah. You should do have it. only rolled three dice. It, does it do it that way around? Not it does it before you right, roll okay. the dice, yeah. On a 50-50 then, because we don't know which way around it was, yeah? Okay. So on a one, two, three, two are dead. No, so just one are dead. Yeah, we need to remember that we one. Need to remember First that time you've ran this right of war, that is the end of the shooting phase. For the world eaters, world eaters, emperor's children. So we're now on to the fight phase. And you're at initiative four. I'm at initiative four. This is going to happen at the same time. Yep. Um, so let's fight. Right, rampages. Two attacks each. Yeah. Plus world eaters charge. Yeah. Four attacks. Plus they'll load out two phallic blades. Five attacks. Five times 15, 75 plus one. 76 attacks, including the sergeant. Here's 60 dice. So weapon skill five versus four. So you're hitting on threes. Hitting on threes. Um, yeah. Down. Strength five. If you're as charged, strength six. So winning on twos, Two. but four is random. Nor my armor. And there's only seven marines there. And I don't know how many you killed, but definitely more than seven. The unit are wiped out, but they strike back on the same time. But I'm hitting on fives because Rampage is better weapon skill with chain swords, which wound on fours. But we have shred, and then you ignore that one. one. So you only have one three up save to make, and you pass it. And those rampages rampage through the first squad of Emperor's children. And at the end of turn one, it will be two points to the world eaters. 
and only one to the loyalists. So in this turn, the World Eaters are looking at bringing their big guns to bear to crack open my second transport while the Rampagers do what Rampagers do next to my home field objective. We're going to start with the Sabre one more time. I'm not reacting one shot hitting on a three. It and this hits. time you hit. It is strength 10, side armor 14 with Sunder. So you can reroll that for Sunder. Let's do it. And that's a penetrating hit. I do have a uh, six up save there because you can't see all of it. Yeah. I failed the save and it's AP1. What does it do? And that's a stunned. It can't move and it would be snap firing next turn but it ignores that for reinforced hold but it doesn't ignore it because it's shot force sure. yeah. so it's stunned and snap firing next turn so the spartan is firing everything at the land raid this time i will shroud even though i'm stunned i don't want the guys out yet no. i'd like to i'd like to leave them in so here is five twin link last cannons hitting on threes with the reroll and we have four hits, strength nine versus armor 14, fives glance, six is pen, and Sunder gets the reroll. Ooh, eat, ooh. So two glances, one pen. Do you want to do the melter as well? Okay. Here's the uh, cover save on the glances, and then a shroud. Uh, so one glance gets through, here's the cover save on the pen. Oh, I'm good. And then multi-melter. Multi-melter. Hits on a three. With a twin linked, and then you need a six to glance. And that's it. So in the end, it is stunned. It does take another glancing hit, but you haven't cracked it open yet. That is the end of the World Eaters shooting phase. Lots of pistols in this army, so everything else out of range or line of sight. Now we're coming down to the rampages, because I'm sure that you want to charge. I'm totally going to charge. So Dreadnought 1 or Dreadnought 2, I'm which one? Bear in mind, please. I've got two reactions. I know you have. Okay. I'm going to get melted. Okay, I've got two reactions in the assault phase, so this one will react, and that one will react. I could do the Empress Children special thing and charge you before you charge me and get some wounds in, but honestly, the melters should the, do the more damage. Yeah. Um, you can ignore one of these per phase, yeah. anyway. So we'll hit you with all the things, and we hit on twos, and that's really good. Right. We're going to wound on twos. And then in this phase, you ignore that one. Yeah. And then you have three five-up cover saves, because you're in a ruin. Three. Just roll your ones, couldn't Okay. And only one of them dies. Only the one of them gets cut in half, and he'll have to be the injured on one. Yeah. And then you charge, and then with Warhawk jump packs... You can't fail. At the end of the charge phase, it looks like this. Activating the Warhawk jump packs one more time. One of the guys took a wound. Then we did all the impact hits for Hammer of Wrath. Hit on sixes, wounding on, and two up. No wounds caused. No wounds. Yep. You're, you're impacting dreadnoughts. Yeah. They don't mind. Anyway, you've put six on one. Yeah. Seven on another. Yeah. You're initiative four. I'm initiative four. This is going to be brutal. Yeah. Tell the light. Seven on one, seven on another. Yep. So 35 attacks versus this Dreadnought. Weapon skill, same. So fours. Fours. You rolled quite low. I did. I'm saying there's a chance. There is a chance. Fours to wound. Fours to wound. Just, just fours this time. Well, oh, what? Well, yeah, because you're strength six with Furious Charge. Yeah. So either way, rending on a four up. Yeah. You did seven wounds. Yeah. My Dreadnought might live. Okay, Dreadnought at the back. And Five plus invulnerable save. Ooh. He's dead. That is six wounds. You kill it. He's out of it there. will blow up. We'll oh. do that at the end of all of this. Yeah. Let's do all the other attacks into the other Dreadnought. With an extra attack because of the Sergeant. Yeah. Forced to hit again. Forced to rend now. Here we go. Uh, and that's a bit worse. That is a bit worse. I'm going to survive. This one had the sergeant in it as well. No. Fives. Oh. It's alive on one wound remaining. Before all the explosions and things, at the same time I hit your back. Yep. Fours. And I hit four times. I'm killing on twos. Yep. Three of them. Yep. Now the assault phase is the same 
That's the Overwatch? Oh, Let's check. Yeah. Yes, it is. The Overwatch is in the Medieval Assault phase. phase, so you've already ignored the one yeah. damage. That doubles you out at AP2. Yeah. So that kills three, three of your yards. dudes. Then let's blow up the Dreadnought. It only blows up two inches. Hits two of my guys, wounds one of them, and that's really cocked. And he's okay. Hits six of yours. Nice. All the guys that All were up against him. Okay. That many, and the sergeant wasn't in that squad. No, so these are all way. threes, and every failed save will double you out. And three die in the explosion. Then piling in looks like this. And curiously, because of the explosions and things, you lost more models in the fight than me. Yeah. So you have a leadership test. Well, you lost more wounds than me. So I lost 14. You, you lost 14. You I lost, lost no. uh, one minute, 11. 11. Yeah. But your leadership eight's stubborn. So leadership eight. And you hold. Because otherwise that lone that dreadnought could have ran them down. So I've got a dreadnought on one wound remaining versus, what, eight rampages left? Yeah. Remaining down this side of the battle grid. That could have been a lot worse for me. I'm happy that I took so many out with the explosion. <laughs> As we go on to Empress Children, turn two. Do my reserves come on? My reserves don't come on. Much of Warlock Code at UK? Yeah. I really need my vets to regroup. <laughs> you as well. really need these vets. I need them back in the fight. Wait. They regroup. They regroup. When you regroup, you can move up your initiative. So they're now hugging cover, wondering what all that fuss was all about and the explosions it was and the things. Plan all along. It was the plan all along. Over here, the unit of vets that were inside the stunned Rhino passed the stun test that they had to make. Oh, Land Raider, by the way. Sorry. Yeah, Land Raider, not Rhino. They've got out. And they're going to go charging into the rampages and hopefully save that dreadnought. Yeah. And then the unit of infantry ran and embarked in it. Because, again, they were there to lend some firepower down into the rampages. But the rampages are already rampaging. So, uh, vets out, normal troops in. Okay? Yep. yep. Uh, over here, this unit stood still because Heart of a Legion is a thing. So, extra shots, Fury of the Legion. And I want to get extra shots down into the despoilers here. And, of course... The Devastators stood still as well, but we're going to start the shooting phase down here, firing through the windows of that ruin into that Despoiler squad. 20 shots because of Fury of the Legion on threes and fours, ignoring one of them because of Crimson Path, leaving six threat saves. Uh, oh, 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 that was good shooting tech, so I wiped out three of them. Nice. So three despoilers went down, then we snap fired the Land Raider at the Dreadnought over there and uh, splitting fire with uh, Power of the Machine Spirit. No wounds over here, but I did put one wound on the Dreadnought. Yes, you did. It's not bad for a snap firing thing. And then we come across to the Devastators one more time. Eight of them can see. And I want to stop that Saber shock pulsing. Yeah, I'm going to shroud it. You're going to shroud this one? I am going to shroud it. Okay, here's threes to hit with Devastators. Against front armor, threes, glance, and then sunder. Six up cover on the glancing hit. And then shrouding the glancing hit on a five. No. And then the six up cover on the penetrating hits. And then shrouding them on fives. It okay. just wanted to die. <laughs> it's definitely a dead saber. Does it blow up? Because it's right next to your lines. And a six could hurt you. No explosions. It just becomes a smoking ruin. So the two out of three of the Sabres are smoking wrecks. That Dreadnought has taken an injury. You have a leadership test to ooh, take on I this do. unit of Despoilers here. Despoilers? Because you lost more. Ooh. <gasps> okay, they fail. They've got a Vexilla though, so they they're only fall back 1d6 oh, right, rather than 2d6. Yeah. Cool. Vexilla means you fall oh. back 1d6 and you also can't fall off the board. Right. But they're going back six. And then I've got a charge to make with my veterans over here into Rampages. Minus two to this, though, because I'm running through ruins. And that's a seven, which becomes a five, which is enough. Here we are after piling in. You couldn't react because you're already in close combat. Already tied up. But I am weapon skill five versus weapon skill five. And I'm higher initiative than you. So I go first. Here's all the lightning claws. Lightning claws, which hit on fours. Killing on fours with the shreddy shred. And that wipes out one, two, three and a half of them. Yeah. And I got five in there with charnable blades. Just the standard charnable blades. Forced to hit. Only six hits. 
Close. Four's wound, that breach. So no save on those two and a three up save on that one. Yep. No. Yep. Two left. Uh, we're not at consolidation yet because it isn't the end of the fight. So we've got to hit the dreadnought. So you've got to hit the dreadnought. Uh, you didn't charge this no, time. No, no. So you're down to less attacks. It's dropped from 75 to 7. Yep. I'm happy with that. That's a better number for Force you. to hit. This dreadnought is oh. only on one wound. That's three hits. Four's rend. One rend. So what it's saying is there's a chance. There's a chance. There's a chance. I need to make a five up. Can I spend a command point if I fail? No. Can I five up. Yes. That is a dead dreadnought, which blows up at initiative step four, hits your two guys and wounds them on twos. Mm. Two more three F saves. And they All make right. it. And then my hammer guy balls in because we're down to uh, initiative two. Hammer sergeant for the win. <sighs> Pause to hit. I hit you once, just oh. once, killing on a two. I kill one. Your leadership ain't stubborn. Did these guys manage to overrun you? Oh, no. It's, yes. Uh, that's that's nine. nine. That's a failed leadership test. So we're going to do an initiative roll-off oh, to yeah. run down the last guy. I got, f yeah, you win. That's eight I'm versus alive. six. So they do manage to fall back. The Rampager champion breaks and falls back from combat. His work here is done. I mean, he's wiped out a tactical squad and two full dreadnoughts. He's, he's turned yeah, around. Done right. He's done all right. He's happy. Uh, then I consolidated a little bit over this way because that's where the objective is. And honestly, it's further away from your forces. So far, so far I'm managing to hang in there. Despite the fact that my reinforcements are not here, despite the fact that the veterans are calling out over the Vox, where is the Storm Eagle? We need reinforcements here as we go into World Eaters. Turn three. Here we are after the World Eaters movement phase and there's a lot of running right to left as they head down towards the onslaught objective. And both of the units that were falling back have regrouped. This unit of despoilers have regrouped and the rampager in the ruin on his own. He regrouped. He licked the blood from his phallax blades and has turned around for more. Here, the Spartan moved up against the uh, cover there and Khan is out. And the second unit of rampagers ready to go charging in and destroy the unit of veterans that took out the rampagers last turn. So I reacted with them. And moved straight away. They can see Khan coming. And of course they're taking a few steps back. And because of terrain. That makes it an impossible charge. So they're kind of hung out in the open for now. Yeah. But that is only threat number one. Because over here. Is threat number two. A unit of despoilers. Threat number three. A unit of despoilers. Neither of them advanced, so they could go charging into the veterans if they're feeling brave. And they are world eaters, and they've got a bajillion attack, so why not? There is the rampage of that, re that regrouped last turn, so 20 troops coming this way. We have the dreadnought advancing, the dreadnought advancing, and we have the unit of red butchers moving towards the onslaught objective that the Empress children want to take, and your warlord tucked in in the middle of them, holding on to the rein, saying, Hold! Not yet, brothers. Not yet. And the last little saber that's still alive down here is out of range of everything, except with the Volkart Culverin. The Volkart Culverin can go shooting in as well. So, yeah. Infantry, infantry, infantry. In There's lots and lots of pressure. Heading down to the World Eaters lines. Do you know where you're going to start the shooting phase? Yep, I think we're going to start by shooting the Spartan into the side of your land radar. I'm definitely shrouding this. Five, twin link last cannon sitting on threes. And a re rolling. Nice. Five's glance, six is pen with Sunder for the re roll. Oh, look at that. That is some critical hits there. So six up cover saves on the glances with the shroud. I shroud all of that. Six up cover saves on the pen with the shroud. I don't shroud that. What does the penetrating hit do? Don't roll a six. Come on, Winter's Head. No, that's just a shaken, which I ignore because uh, reinforced hull, but it does take a hull point. Then you've got a twin-linked multi-melter as well. 
and you are in multi melt range, and this time it hits, so you get 2d6 for armor penetration. And it pens. So, six up cover. I make oh. it. It just takes a hull point. It's down to two hull points remaining, but apart from that, it's uninjured. It can still fight. Bolkite Culverin, pintle mounted on the saber, is going into the vets that caused you so much issue last turn. This hits on threes. And we have four hits, and there's a wound on two, so I like Volk Guard coverings. Like you know, I've got a full unit of Devastators that are uh, for my Raven Guard. Nice. With Volkites. It's with 50, the big ones. It's 50 yeah. shots. 50 shots? Yeah. thing is, it's that deflagrate as well. It's on deflagrate. Those, on those numbers, you can I know. get a lot of nasty death. I know. So, for example, I fail three wounds here, so you get three, yeah, three more wounds with deflagrate. <laughs> Causing two more wounds. In the end, you kill two veterans in total because they're four, uh, two wounds each, yeah. and that's four wounds. So I've done my reaction. So you're going to fire pistols into the vets as well on threes and fours for no wounds. Ooh. But one has a plasma. One plasma pistol. No. And that misses. <laughs> this was this squad. This other squad had a couple of pistols in range as well, and they fired in and missed. And that's the end of the shooting phase, and you are declaring a charge wow. with the despoilers into my veterans. It's an eight-inch charge with cover, and I'm going to do my once per battle, Empress okay. Children thing, and try and outcharge you. Okay. Okay? Uh, so it's a charge roll-off. Okay. And if I beat you, I make it. Okay, so we roll one dice. We just roll charges normal. Oh, right. It's just roll, actually yeah, the number yeah. And I've if my charge any... is better than yeah. your charge, I catch uh, you. Okay. So after you, sir. Who hits first? <laughs> So that's a seven, which would be a fail charge anyway. Yeah. But if I get an eight, I charge you. Yeah. And, and you that's do. an 11. We end up our charge like this, which means the second despoiler squad, which shot into them, can try and make this charge as well. They can, but can they? they yes, can. they can. And at the end of the charge phase, it looks like this. This is going to be a lot it's of murder, James. Yeah. This is going to be a lot I don't of death. Know if I may, might wish I hadn't fed you two units. Well, we're going to find out. Um, I'm initiative five, though. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, because you charge me, I'll put all the all the lightning claws into one squad, all yeah. the charnable weapons into another squad. Okay. My hammer goes last. Yeah. Uh, yes, this will work. You're just spoilers, though. Your weapons go four. Mm. So I'm hitting you on threes. These are lightning claws. I need force to wound you. Um, yeah. Four. Four so far with Shreddy Shred. Oh, Shred. So that many wounds into that unit. Yeah. So you can take one away. So yeah. might as well take a rending Wait. one. That kills two of them definitely. And you can start tanking on Artificer Armor if you want to. Let's tank it and see okay. what happens. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's, He's dead. dead. So I kill the sergeant and two in this squad. Then Charnable Blades hitting squad number two. On threes and vets versus not vets. And fours, but fives breach. And uh, that one's really cocked. So you can ignore that one. Yep. And then two will die and you can tank that on Artificer Armor. Yep. Okay, so, so I kill two regular. three in one squad, two in another squad. And then you get to fight, and then I've got a hammer buried yep. in there. Now, the way this works is to spoilers have two attacks because of their loadout. Yep. And then you get plus two attacks because you're world eaters. Yep. And then you get plus extra attack because that's a chosen warrior squad with yep. Spider Legion. So seven guys are going to hit 35 times. But veterans, you hit on fives. Hit on fives. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. That's a lot of fives. Chain axes winning on threes. Reroll in for Shreddy Shred. As those chain axes are red. Oh, oh. Now, I don't want to save it on my hammer guy because no. he hasn't struck yet, but they're two wounds. So I'll start applying one on the hammer guy. And he has a two up save. 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 Oh, okay, he takes a wound, and then you can apply them elsewhere because you can always split once you've got characters. So you kill one, yep, and put my sergeant down to one wound, yep, and then you've got claws on your sergeant in that yep. squad. 
Seven attacks. Seven attacks. On just a sergeant. On a sergeant. It's I love crazy. It. Uh, fives. He hits once. <laughs> oh, nice work, Sarge. Where were uh, you? Forced a wound. Yes, and that's a wound. It's AP3. I don't get a save. The injured guy dies. Squad number two. Squad number two. 30 attacks. Fives. And three to wound. Chain axes go rev. With the reroll. Okay. So I don't want my artificer sergeant to die. So these are all three up saves. And that's all your attacks because you're self instead. Right, you did eight wounds to me. Yeah. How many have I done to you so far? You've five. You've done two in one squad and three in the other five in total. Okay, yeah. so you're winning this combat so far. Yeah. But now I have a sergeant. Hammer. Um, and which, is he, he'll hit the one with your sergeant, with sergeant still, still in. in. Okay. Um, oh, and he'll hit on threes. He hits every single time. Ooh. He will kill on twos. So he kills three. I kill three. So it's a draw. It's a combat's a draw. Combat's a draw. Somehow the combat's a draw. So at the end of all of that, no leadership need to be taken on either side because it's a draw. You've got five left in one squad with a sergeant that still claws. Yeah. Seven left in another squad, sergeant's dead. Yeah. I've got five guys and one of them's injured. And we're trapped. We are trapped. Which is pretty good for you because they're just normal despoilers. Yep. And that was a lot of attacks. And it means I can't shoot into any of these squads yep. here as you slowly cut cut your way through my veterans. That is the end of World Eaters turn three. Still applying pressure down on my home field objective here. But at least I've kept Khan out of the fight for one turn. Yeah. I can't keep him out of the fight for every turn. But that land raider is free to fire. All of these devastators can see Khan's unit. But if I just pour firepower down into them, it means I'm not pouring firepower down into any of the vehicles or the dreadnoughts further down the battle grid. So I have a decision to make. Also, does the Storm Eagle gunship come in? Does it make it? He's already delayed. I feel like he's in a dogfight up there. No, he's uh, not. He's just chilling around looking at his hair in the middle. What? Because <laughs> just, he's Empress Children. Just like, I can't go yet. I'm, a, I'm not ready. Yeah. Gotta yeah. sort it. Gotta do my makeup. <laughs> On a three, the Storm Eagle comes in. The Storm Eagle doesn't come in. I knew it was coming in turn four. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if that's a bad thing, though, because all I need to do is get down here in turn six and take control of that. Yeah. Maybe there's... I can see a hero moment here. I, I can, and it could go either way, because they could come in and they could do their job. Yeah, and, and maybe swing it that way. But equally, yeah. they could come in later and and sweep it at the last minute. It's if they're here, they might be getting killed. Is there gonna be a last hero <laughs> moment in this game? It's close. It's close. Anyway, let's go on to Empress Children. Turn four. Turn three. It's, it's, turn, it's turn three. three. It's turn, I'm just it's, it's turn three. Already. Here we are at the end of the Empress Children movement phase. I only moved two units. I ran this unit of Empress Children down this side of the battle grid. I mean, what else are they going to do? So they're coming around this way. It is a six turn game and it's only turn three. And I want to get close to that thing. So you did react with your spoilers coming straight towards them. As you can see, there's windows in that ruin down there. Gloriously sculpted by marchofwar.co.uk. Uh, I can't shoot because I ran. Uh, they're going to jump on me next turn, maybe. In the middle, I didn't want to move the land raider at all because then you might react with stuff here. And it's good. It's good. I've got shots. All of the guns can go into Khan's unit. Yep. And all of the guns from the Devastators can also see Khan's unit. And that unit scores. So I think I need to kill him. And, and, to, and it's got Khan in it. <laughs> and it's got Khan in it. And we know what Khan does. And I've still got a unit of tactical marines hidden inside this thing. Staying very, very quiet for now. As for the unit of vets that regrouped last turn, I ran around this way. Again, out of the fight for now, James. But if I've just got one guy on that objective in turn six, I stop you scoring it. Yep. And if I somehow... See, so it's... It's all Horus Heresy games. You have no idea how they're it's going to go so close. until so you close. get to the end. Yeah. Unless they're not. But... <laughs> Unless they're not. Well, I, I must say, I've had about, I want to say, one or two in ten games is not close Yeah. for us anyway. All the other ones are really, really close. I do know that some people on the internet have found 
You can you can break heresy oh, pretty you easy. You really can break heresy. Yes. I mean, some can, horrible stuff. Have you gone up against an army of entirely dreadnoughts? I was going to say a blood angel dreadnought list when they've got the jump pack dreadnoughts and stuff. I've gone up. That's filthy. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but I went up against it with world eaters and I've got loads of machetes. Okay. So actually, it turned out to be the worst thing he could have ended up against. He was going, oh, there's no last cannons. It'll be fine. Turns out that loads of machetes that well, are auto wounding on fours. Dreadnoughts don't like it. Was that <laughs> over in three turns? No, it, worked, but it was a really brutal get. But he thought it was going to be a walk in the park. He'd win in three turns. And right. as it happened, it actually came down to a really close game at the end. Machetes for the win, huh? Machetes for the win. Yeah, uh, I can't remember the last time it's been a whitewash for me, to be honest. I think, yeah, you can break it if you want to, but uh, it's just, it doesn't feel very Horus Heresy no. if you try and break to, it. To try and break it, it's just, no, there's no, no point. And I mean, making mean lists is fine, but yeah. you can really, really break it. There's some horrible stuff I've seen people do with the salamanders. Right. Because you can give your terminators a three up in Vaughn Ooh. and then you can stick them with Vulcan and Vulcan does a thing to a squad that he's attached to okay he, he, either they get back up or he gets back up or and uh, oh okay. it's rent yeah that's filthy well also you'd yeah. be able to I mean those terminators are in the elite slot so yeah. you could bring three or four units of three up in vulnerable save terminators and just and, and Vulcan and yeah yeah okay and just stand there yeah but uh the thing I like about heresy is the stories that it tells. Is that yeah. this list, this this Blood Angels, no, World Eaters list is brutal. Yeah. With Khan in it, with the things, with all the phallic blades, but they are ravening madmen charging down towards my objective. So it fits the narrative. The Empress exactly. children are on the back fit, doing all they can to hold in there, calling out for the Storm Eagle gunship for aid, but there is no aid at the moment. They just have to stand alone. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off the shooting phase by firing all the LAS cannons from the Land Raider into Khan's unit. And that multi-melter is going to pivot with Power of the Machine Spirit and shoot your Spartan. Okay. Do you want to react with any of these? I'm trying to draw out reaction you because are. there's 10 Devastators no, looking good. that way as well. I'm going to wait for the Devastators. You're going to wait for the Devastators. Yeah. Let's do a twin-linked multi-melter in Armour Bane Rage start off with it hits armor main you ready i don't want to do it yeah. that's just a glancing that's hit weird. six up cover anyway i take a wound off the land raider spartan spartan's down to four hull points five hull points here's the non twin link las cannons here's the twin link las cannons three of them hit will kill the rampages in khan squad on twos and that's two of them dead but one of them gets ignored that's one of them dead. <laughs> that crimson thing is brutal. It's, it's good, isn't it? Let's fire all the devastators down at them as well. Do you want to shroud this one? I will shroud this one, yes. Yes. Threes to hit you. Twos to wound. Six up cover saves. You, you, that's okay. You save one of them and then five up shrouding as they stop, drop and roll. Is that I not? wipe out five. And that is the end of my shooting phase. It's leadership 10 with Khan, roll 10 or less. Oh, that's a 10. <laughs> I saw that six and worried then. It would have been a, bit, a little bit embarrassing if Khan had broke and fallen and ran away. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, he wouldn't have been able to live it down once he went back to the canteen and was chatting to the other guys. Uh, that's it. So we're on to the fight phase. We're all at initiative four, except for my hammer. Now let's fight. Now you're the spoilers. Yep. You're not charging. No. So no Spite of the Legion, no charge bonus, no World Eaters bonus, many less attacks. Many less attacks. Here's the chain access. 22 attacks in total, both the squads together, because all the initiative, it all happens at the same all time. Same. Fives to hit. But I'm still fives to hit because you're still there. And that's good. That's bad. Threes to win with Shreddy Shred. And that's not good. That's not good okay. at all. Rolling for shredding? Come on, Shreddies. There's some shredded wheat. That's what we're after. Okay. So these are all three up saves. Uh, I take two wounds. One of my guys falls. Then the lightning claws on the last sergeant standing in your force. And he hits twice this time. He's going to wound on fours with the shreddy shred. Shreddy shred. And kills another one. So I've lost four wounds, but at the same time, we fight. Yep. Here is two lightning claws into the squad without the sergeant. I'm hitting you on threes, and that's really good. 
I'm killing these guys on fours. Wow. With shred. Oh, wow, only one. Lucky you got shred. One so far. I kill three of them. Three. Lightning claws into the other squad. Everything hits. Wounding on fours. With the shred. And then I'll add the charnable blades in there as well. Here's because it's a guy with a... No, it was the hammer going that way as well. No, it's the charnable blade guy that you killed. Threes and then fours, but fives. <gasps> Breach. Okay, so into the squad with the sergeant. Okay. They're all AP2. So they're straight through. So I've got Those two you can tank if you wanna. So I've got no choice. There's five of them left. So okay. that kills four of them, and this is now the sergeant for okay. his life. Right. He just He's died. dead. Yeah, wipe the squad. Then I've still got a hammer. Hammer hitting the remaining squad only hits once and doesn't kill any. At the end of that fight, the despoiler squad, one of them got wiped out. I've got three vets left versus three more despoilers and you lost that combat by four. I did. So you've got to get four or less on your leadership and oh. you don't. So now we do a sweeping advance. I roll a d6 and add my initiative, so I'm up to eight. And you're up to nine, so you do nine. beat me. They do manage to fall back again, successfully, 2d6 inches. And at the end of all that, it looks like this. I've got three veterans left. One of them's on one wound. You have got four left in the despoiler squad. They fell back 11 inches. And I tell you what, these veterans are my MVP so far. Yeah. They help wipe out a rampager squad and two units of despoilers. There's still a Rampager there that I'm sure is going to turn around from the first Rampager squad and go flying in. You'll notice when I consolidated, I came back away from Khan and his nasty boys in the central street. Why? Because it's, it's Khan. Khan. It's Khan. As we go on to World Eaters, turn four. As the World Eaters cross the Avenue of Lies, the right side of the battle grid is looking more and more empty. Except for this unit of despoilers here that want to go charging into the tactical squad. These guys on top, they're below, but we put them up there because it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, I didn't react there. I'm standing waiting for you to come charging in with those despoilers. We'll see how that ends. In the middle of the avenue, however, Khan has thought... thought he'd jump back he, 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 was, he was almost being tactical there, wasn't he? And one thing I have realised is I've kind of left my Spartan facing the wrong way. Do you mind if I very quickly pivot it? You can pivot the Spartan. You didn't roll a one. No. So he's. So you're him. pivoting and can't jump back inside Can't it. jump back inside it. Yeah, he came out for the charge last turn. The vet saw him coming, backed off, and he realised he couldn't make the charge. And he thought, yeah, well, I could go charging through the building one more time. But you was... If you did come through, that, that veteran unit would just keep backing away from Carl. Yeah. He could chase them charge. off the table. But... <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. there's only three left, only two and a half wounds left in there. I don't want to take a Rampager squad to the face. Mm -hmm. So they've jumped back inside this thing. Goes to turn six. It's still turn four. You've got turn five, turn six to get them out yeah. and sit them on that objective there. Uh, that Rampager, that lone Rampager with he's the jump pack, lucky. he's still alive. He just, he just walked this time, didn't want to activate yeah. his Warhawk. And this squad of despoilers, well, they ran because you've still got a couple of turns. Yep. And the Dreadnought ran. Yep. So we're now up to, I want to say it's wave two, but it feels more like wave three <laughs> is about to come crashing this way. One Rampage, a despoiler squad and Dreadnought coming this way round. And the Sabre tank is now in range with its guns into my veterans and all of the guns can fire. And the squad that was falling back, where are they? Did they, they keep they, falling back? They, they kept falling back. They and kept they, falling and, back. And they went big and kept running. Okay. Uh, their sergeant was wiped out. So leadership seven now. Yeah. So they're on their way back. We did talk off camera. I've got like about 800 points up in the sky. Yeah. Doing nothing. Doing nothing. Yeah. But you've also had a few hundred points in the backfield. The Red Butcher squad's 500 and something. Right. There's and 200 points of Praetor. Yeah. And then two Dreadnoughts who've literally not lifted up finger yet yet yeah so about do yeah a bit more about but 1200 points it's all about me trying to take this objective exactly. so they're, they're about they're, to come into their own hopefully we or, shall or see or die horribly <laughs> try. anyway let's move on to the shooting phase there's only a couple of things that can shoot the saber can shoot yep and the spartan can shoot and these despoilers over here can shoot and that's about that's it your lot. so the saber assault tank is going to fire at the vets here's the volkites on threes, and then twos to wound. And that's all the wounds. 
Uh, I'm not shrouding this. Three up saves. One comes through. The flag are eight. No. Nope. Okay, so the injured guy dies, and then you have the straight shot with the neutron laser on a three. <laughs> Just seems excessive. It hits. Strength 10. You're wounding an infantryman on a... Oh. No! No! <laughs> And it's got thunder, but I don't work yeah. against people. I like to think it just smashed into one of the... Well, that's what this hole is. <laughs> yeah, it blew a hole in the side of the building. However, one was injured, so he does get wiped out, and that will be a leadership test, strangely enough. Yeah. You can fire your rampager in. Yeah, he might well running forward. He's got a pistol. Um, he hits. He wounds. And he injures one. Blood was spilt here. He's happy and angry at the same time. Then we're coming over here. The spoilers are going to fire their bolt pistols into my tactical squad. Now, here's the thing. I'm thinking about returning fire because I've only got one reaction in the shooting phase. And much as though I'd love to shroud this land raider, I think he's already... Yeah. <laughs> I think he's probably dead. There's no cover here. Nope. And I think he's already... Uh, uh, well, his luck. He's run his luck to the very end. So I'm not going to shroud there. I will return fire here. Okay. So bolt pistol me, baby. Bolt pistol, six shots. And you hit five times. Can it penetrate the armor on fours? Uh, well, it wounds three times. Let's uh, let's do the saves. You take two of my guys out. I return fire twenty times. And a wound on fours. Uh, four wounds. Okay, you kill two. I kill one. Okay. Now we're moving across to the Spartan and you just said something very interesting off camera. So I was, I, by doing that, you've made me safe to shoot the last cannon devastator squad. Ah, so instead of sure, shooting the land I think, raider, I yeah. can't return fire with the devastators. No. So I might actually just smash everything from it into uh, them. No shots into the land raider at all? Not even a cheeky multi melter in armor vein range? Can I tempt you with one waff of the Go on, do you know what? I, I, will, I will take your bait. I don't have a save or anything. No, I know. I will take your bait and I will, I will put the Melty Melter into you. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, it, Hit me, baby, one more time. Come on. Five into the last cannon team. Yes. Which is lucky to rolling because they missed everywhere. Uh, four hits. Two's to wound. Only two wounds. <sighs> Ruin saves. Okay, you do kill two, but it won't be enough to force a leadership no, test. which is a shame. That was what I was relying on. Then we have a multi-misser at point-blank range. Surely it can't miss. It hits. Armour Bane, 2d6. And that's a penetrating hit. I have no save. A five or six would destroy the Land Raider. And that's a three. That's a weapon destroyed. So on one hull point remaining, the front weapon is ripped off. The uh, Spartan gunners were too busy trying to fire at the Devastators and in the end didn't take didn't out both either. of their targets. Splitting fire always works, mate. It, it, yeah, it, well, unless it doesn't. <laughs> and that is the shooting phase done. I have a leadership on the veterans here. Leadership eight and they fail. <laughs> and they fall back nine inches, which will probably save them for the charge, save them <laughs> from a charge. They break. They run. The Rampager activates his Warhawk jump pack, wants to catch them as they're falling back. Plus three to this charge roll, so you only need a six. You make the charge. Don't roll a one, because you're jumping out of terrain. Do you get it for jumping out? I thought yeah. it was only landing into uh, it. In, oh. out, move through, so, he's okay. fine. He's all right. So he does make the charge, which means I have to pass. So you've caught a unit that's falling back. Yep. So they automatically have to regroup. If they fail to regroup, you kill them all. Okay. You run them down. Leadership 8. You run Just them down. down. He consolidates, puts his back to the terrain. He's the sneaky one, this one. So the Devastators can't see him at all. And then we have a second charge over here that are spoilers into my tactical squad, which will overwatch you. Three is to hit on overwatch. It's heresy. Look at all that winter's head. Loads of winter's head. If you'd like some winter's head if you'd like some winter's dice then email me at winters40k at gmail.com and I'll let you know if there's any at the time of filming there's still some left yep. so winters40k gmail.com and I'll let you know how to get some PayPal and all that sort of shit and against fours to wound you one two three four five six that's cocked seven seven wounds on your spoilers I think there's seven in the squad if you could roll all ones and twos and I wipe them out that'd be lovely wow I take down three 
Three on Overwatch. Five. And then you've got a charge, and a Snake Eyes will fail because of Ruins. That's not a failed charge. So in the end, you've only got two guys left. One of them, however, is a Sergeant with a Power Fist, so he'll fight last, because my Sergeant has a Claw. So let's yeah. fight. So here is your Chain Axe, which hits on a four. And you miss. <laughs> I pile in. And the Empress children execute the perfect ambush, hitting back on foot. Oh, I need it once. Uh, wounds on a four. It does wound. I've got to add my claw now. Sergeant with claw. Fours. And then fours to wound. Okay, two wounds. One's at AP three. They're both at eight and one's not. So you can tank both on your Artificer Armor if you want to, but he hasn't fought yet. He hasn't. And he could swing this tide. So I've got one. One at AP3. So that kills so your Vexilla. That kills my Vexilla. And then one two up save. That's probably the it's way probably to do the it. It's probably the way to do that, isn't it? One, one two, two up save. save. No. He's dead. You've He's paid. dead. You cut the despoilers down. You pistoled them. They returned fire. You charged <laughs> in. They overwatched you. They cut them down. What happened here? We'll consolidate closer towards the World Eater's lines. Like that. Again, they're below, but putting them on top because yeah, it's easier. See Will yeah. this lone squad of heroes they're, win me the game? They're coming. They're coming for me. Will that tactical squad the... be able to take out an entire squad of Red Butchers and a Dreadnought and a Look at the way they just went through those. <laughs> They'd go great. I think just charge them in, mate. See how it goes. Anyway, that's the end of turn four for the World Eaters. And you've got a lot of scoring units that are about to descend in on my onslaught objective. However, it's turn four. And there are a scream of ramjets overhead as the Storm Eagle gunship finally makes it to the battle grid. Okay, here we are off the Emperor's Children movement phase. And James, I'm going to be cunning as well as brutal. Okay. Because I've only moved two things. Okay. I haven't, see, I've moved this unit of hero tactical marines coming down towards you, your objective. And there is the Storm Eagle gunship flying down the Avenue of Lies, about to put down all the firepower into the Red Butchers down here. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of pain coming this way. And I thought about moving my land raid. There's a unit of tactical still inside there. And I thought about moving it and stuff and things. But um, I just need to stop you getting that one, right? Yeah. So if I get them out, rampages to spoilers, they're dead. And if I get my second veteran squad forward around this bay, rampages to spoilers, they're dead. Yeah. So hold, hold for now, boys. This is the Emperor's Children. Let's be cunning as well as brutal. Let's hold. And then in turn five, six, launch and try and do some things. Okay. Right now, this turn is all about trying to hurt those Red Butchers, I yep. think. Because before we do that, I'm going to fire everything from the Land Raider point-blank range into your Spartan. Because if I manage to crack it open... Yeah. Well, maybe the Devastators will shoot a Khan squad one more time. So, yeah. makes sense. Do you want to shout Shroud of Spartan? Or are you going to keep it for the inevitable firepower that's going to come down no, onto I'm Red Butchers? You're going to Shroud, gonna shroud, the, gonna Spartan. shroud the Spartan? Why not the Red Butchers? Because they're all the way over there and I don't want them <laughs> dead. It can shoot back in a minute. So, yeah, no, that's good. I suppose it is your it's, big, reliable gun platform. It's also got my guys in it that it's stopping them dying. Okay. Here are. The uh, Gravis mounted Sponsoon Las Cannons. And because of Flare Shield, I need sixes. But with Sunder, I get to re roll. Nothing happens. Cool. Here is a multi misser, which misses, but twin linked, which hits <sighs> Armor Bane. I hate this bit. Just a seven and I pen. I don't pen. Cool. Nothing. Land Raider, point blank That's range, right. all the shots flicker off the flare shield. Yeah. And you spent your shrouding. I spent my shroud. Okay. Let's fire everything from a Storm Eagle gunship down into Red Butchers. And there are vengeance launchers on top. It's got two of these strapped to the hull. The first shot will scatter this way, one inch. And the second squat uh, is going a long, long way. In total, six get hit. This is more anti infantry though. Plus don't count. And I'm wounding on threes. But you have two up terminator plate against this. And you can re-roll because it's a blast and you have heavy armour. In the end, no wound scores with that. We're good. Okay, twin linked multi-melter, twin linked las cannons. I'm gonna do it all together because it all hits and wounds the same. Okay? okay. These all hit on threes and they're all twin linked and they all wound on twos. 
and all of them wound actually before you rolled that dice one wound got through so in the shooting phase you'd have negated that wound yeah yeah, yeah. So that so wound's that's, negated. That's, that's not, so I can't negate one of these. You can't negate one of these. Yeah. These are four up and vulnerable saves on cataphractic plate or a W out. Okie dokie. Does it have... I thought it had two multi-melters in the front. I'm only um, saying because yeah, I think I it's know, an extra shot. Yeah, I know. It looks like it's got two multi-melters, but on the Storm Eagle gunship, that is one twin-linked multi-melter. It's which, which a multi-melter already has twin-link for being yeah. a single multi-melter. It should be two twin-linked multi-melters. It should melters. totally. But uh, no, it's only, right. it's only three shots. Four ups. Four ups or they die. Two of them die. All right, so that unit has already ignored the first thing per phase. So the six devastators that can see them will fire down at the red butchers as well. Okie dokie. Threes, and only three of them hit. Twos, at least all three of them wound. Three invulnerable saves, and a wipeout two, two more. After the Storm Eagle and the Devastators, this tactical squad joined in with the Fusillade and managed to put one wound in on the Red Butchers as well. Plinked another one off. That's the end of my shooting phase. Yep. Uh, you don't have any morale to test with the Red Butchers because yeah. they're fearless. They're ravening madmen. They don't care. So long as blood is flowing, corn is happy. And in fact, that is the end of my turn four. I'm not charging with anything. Thanos has yet to snap his finger. <laughs> We're heading to the end game. World Eaters, turn five. With the sound of ramjets screaming down the avenue of lies, the World Eaters respond. This dreadnought sees some infantry stepping out from that ruin over there, and he thinks, one minute, I'm going to have them. Because they could score. They could be, there is a world where one of them ends up on this objective at the end of the game yeah. and takes it from you. And then the tanks. The tanks have moved around to fire up at a zooming flyer, Obviously, why really? not? Sounds like a good idea. It's sixes to hit a zooming fire. It would be hilarious if it blows it up. If you blow it up, it would be absolutely devastating to everything on the inside, by the way. Yeah. It, it's strength 10, AP 2, it's nasty. I'd need to make five up and vulnerable. It would be nasty. So let's pray to the Emperor that that doesn't happen. No, we don't pray to the Emperor. You're, you're, yeah, oh, he's but not with dead the, yet, he's not a god no, you're and not he's not dead that. yet. Let's not do any of that praying stuff. That praying like, is that sounds like an admittance that he's dead now. No, <laughs> praying is not allowed. We the imperial truth. Let's trust in the mechanicum that made such a swarthy beast as this. Yeah, uh, with holes inside. Can't stay inside the Spartan. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's nothing really to cut up. What do you mean? Well, he can't cut up a land raider. Yes. And and there's nobody over here. I'm too far away. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you're hiding in a building at the other end of the table. Not hiding, I'm tactically positioned here to shoot down at the objective that you want. Yeah. So you could come running out and stand on that objective so I could shoot you. I could. But you're not. Not, not yet. <laughs> give, give me a minute. It turns out as well, getting down and having a good look, because parallax effect is a thing with buildings, that the Devastators can't actually see the Dreadnought. They can't actually see this last lone rampager as well. So you've got quite a few scoring options down here. He can score, the spoilers can score, Khan's unit can score. I thought I was being, cage I was being cagey lining up for turn six, but it turns out I'm being outcaged by the cage warriors themselves, <sighs> MMA masters, the world eaters. Yeah, boy. Do you want to shoot this? Uh... I do want to shoot this. Okay, I'm definitely shrouding. Are you He's sure? jinking right. He's jinking left. Well, you can see where you clipped the statue and took the top off it. Took the top off that. <laughs> yeah. So, five las cannons hitting a zooming flyer on, on sixes. sixes. Rerolling. Yes. And there's a six already. And then we have the rerolls. It's like Overwatch, but worse. No. One hit. Strength nine, 12 all round on the armor. Doesn't do anything. Sunder. Yes. Yes. No, it got worse. <laughs> Twin link left melt we melt on the roof. Melted, yeah. One shot, twin linked. No. Misses. So it fires up at the Storm Eagle flying down the sh it jinx right, it jinx left, but I've jinked, which means I can't jink the sabre. Yeah. Which is gonna <laughs> fire at it. One shot One hits shot. on a six with its neutron laser beam. This, this would be so cool. Oh no, it's twin link, not uh, no. Yeah. The Volcar Culverin could technically hurt it. Six is to hit, six is to wound. There's a hit. It can glance on a six. It doesn't oh, glance. Close. Imagine that. All the laser beams, all the melters, all the things coming up <laughs> against it. And no wounds cause. 
Are you going to fire this Dreadnought into the tactical squad that you want to charge? Dreadnought into the tactical squad that I'm going to charge. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I can't react anymore. So two's to hit, two's to kill. Two shots. Yeah, two shots. A melter in each fist. fist. Both of them hit. One of my guys is murdered. That's the end of the shooting phase. The Dreadnought needs to charge five inches. He charges nine. Piling in at the end of the charge phase. I don't think those tacticals are long for this world, but let's fight with them. And the tactical squad, my sergeant with the lightning claw, managed to put one wound on your contemptor. Now the contemptor fights back. Four attacks, plus two on the charge, world eaters. And he hit on threes with six attacks. And hit five times. You're killing on twos. You wipe out three of them. So I lost Do the I, combat. Does that chain fist? No, uh, the armor bane works armor against bane vehicles and stuff. It looks like yeah. an anti-person one, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it's for vehicles. Yeah. Uh, cool. So I lost by two. Three. So leadership, well, I took a wound no, off sorry, here. sorry, I meant three. Yes. So leadership six. They're <laughs> definitely falling back. Initiative roll off. Do you catch them? I rolled a nine in total. You rolled a six in total. They do okay. successfully fall back. There's a Vexilla in that squad, so only fall back one D6 inches. Cool. The Dreadnought consolidates. And that is the end of World Eaters. Turn five. That was a quick turn. Basically ran that unit down. We're going on to World Eaters turn. Sorry, Empress Children turn five. That unit will need to regroup. And they fail to regroup. They continue to fall back. Uh, only one D6, sorry. So on a one, two, three, it was that one. So they're falling back another inch as we go on to Empress Children. Turn five. Yes. Turn five, the Storm Eagle deposits its cargo in the middle of the streets. That unit that I have inside of it with my Praetor can score. Yeah. Now this is either a game winning move or <laughs> it's, it's going to go horribly wrong. It's nail biting stuff now, mate. Having said that, even if I manage to take the objective off of you, you can still take that objective over there. And you got two points in turn one. I got one point in turn one. Nobody's warlord's dead yet. No one's warlord's dead yet. And then it's going to come down to who killed more. I regrouped with that unit there. No, they're still falling back with that unit there. I've pivoted around with my land raider because the way it works is I can get all the shots into Dreadnought. Yeah. Because he is a threat to this unit that is pushing the uh, Corn Berserkers back lines. And yep. when the land raider moved, you responded with a Spartan. Didn't get immobilized. So I'm setting up for turn six, and you turn the Spartan round to set up for turn six as well, to yep. rush forward and take these objectives. The only other thing that moved is my veterans down here. They're broken Getting, cover. They're broken cover. They're not happy about it, but they're broken <laughs> cover. They've been told to defend this at all costs, and if so, sell this with their lives. One minute, it suddenly occurred to me that vehicle facings is a thing. Do you mind if I move my storm Thank you. Thank you. I pivoted a bit. That was just enough to bring... The guns aren't central line mounted, they're front mounted, so it is enough to bring them in range of the red butchers there. So we'll start the shooting phase by shooting at the red butchers there. Fired the Vengeance launcher in first here. Managed to get eight hits with both of the shots. Yeah. Threes to wound. Now, what happens is you lose that one. Yeah. Uh, and then no. these are all two up saves, which you can re-roll because they're heavy... There's two wounds. Re-rolling. Okay, there's no wounds. Okay. Now let's fire last cannons and multi-melters in, which everything hits and everything wounds. Three, four plus and vulnerable saves. Oh no, two die. It's four left. And your Praetor. My Praetor has a Magna Combi Bolter. Okay. One shot. Yeah. Disintegrator. He's a Praetor. He hits on twos. It gets hot, so it didn't get hot. It is strength five. Yeah. I wound on threes. That's one wound at AP two instant death. Okay. So that just goes straight. Um, no. Four invul up. Invulnerable save. Just on one. Makes it. Some good winter's good head winter's there. Head. You're okay. Land Raider. Okay. Let's do Land Raider. Let's do all Laz cannons into Dreadnought. Yep. Yeah. Multi-missile one more time into Spartan. Do you want to shroud any of this? Because I want to crack that Spartan. You do. What are you thinking, March Award at Code UK, James? I think there's more shots coming out of that Sun Fury death squad up there. It's just devastating. It's not it's just something... devastating, it's... So you want to wait to I'm see. I'm going to wait and see what... You're going to say, I'm going to do it with them. Okay, <laughs> okay. Multi-melter into side of Spartan. Yep. Twin-linked. It hits. 
Can I pen the third time in a row would be lovely. I do pen. There's no cover. No cover. A five or six and we have a dead Spartan and Khan will be very angry. Don't you? It's immobilized. Oh, that's right. It's just I'll immobilized. That's okay. Is that okay? It's all good. Why is that? It's a mo I suppose it's fine. It, 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 it's facing the right way. The guys can get out the front of it. Okay. It's it, yes, I'd have liked six inches of extra movement, but that's fine. Well, we'd all, we'd like, all six like six inches. inches. Yeah, exactly. I know, but sometimes all you need is three inches for a good pile in. Totally. Yeah. Uh, four last cannons into dreadnought then, and everything hits for the first time. Strength 9, toughness 7. Everything wounds. That's never happened before. Four invulnerable saves. And you fail three of them. It's down to two wounds. Ooh. You know this unit here then? Yes. They're going to snap fire up at it. Okay. Sixes. I get a hit. I don't wound. Okay. Sorry so you can for still snap fire even when you're broken? Yeah. Right. Got yeah. it. Cool. While they're right. running away. As they're running, shooting over the shoulders. Yes. So the Devastator team. Yep. Now, last thing left to fire. I could fire down a Red Butchers. Yeah. They're fearless, so they can't shroud. Uh, but so is a Dreadnought. It's fearless. It can't shroud. Okay. And I feel like that Dreadnought's got to go. Okay. There's six that can see it. Let's shoot at Dreadnought. Let's try and kill it. I hit four times. I wound four times. Four, five up, invulnerable saves. It's got two wounds remaining. Oh, this feels bad. And it's dead. That yeah. is a dead Dreadnought, which will blow up right next to my guys. Four D6 inches. Yeah. For one. Nine. It doesn't hit good. any of them. That's the end of my shooting phase in turn five. You're all lined up to take my objective. You're all lined up to take mine. Yes. So let's charge. We charge 11. Ooh, they're angry. The end of the charge phase, it looks like this. No challenges issued or accepted. No. We're just going to pour on the pain. Now, my Phoenix Terminator is an initiative four, but plus one because of reach. Yep. Five. And my Praetor's five. Yeah. And then I'm Emperor's Children. So another plus one initiative. Yeah. I'm initiative six on the charge, which even is higher than your Praetor. Yeah. First up, reacting. Disordered charge. You need a 10 or less. You do. So that stops me with the plus one attack on the charge. Yep. Now, you count as weapon skill three to hit. Yeah. And weapon skill five. Yeah. And I'm plus one to hit because Praetor, Martyr of this man, I'm hitting yep. you on twos. Yeah. So normally they have two attacks each. You've stopped the plus one on the charge, but I can also drop my weapon skill by one yeah. to get an extra attack. I'm doing that anyway, because Red Butchers. Yeah. Long story short, 28 attacks with the spears. Okay, and then there's the rapier. So here's all the spears which hit you on twos. Strength six, but you're ravening madmen. Reduce my strength by one. Yeah. So I'm hit, wounding you on threes instead of twos. Yeah. But I'm really looking for some good winter's head here because these are murderous strike. Okay. So you have to do instant death first. Four instant death, four up and vulnerable save saves. And I kill three of them. And then these are all terminator saves. Yeah, so there's two ups. And one takes a wound. Actually, interestingly enough, Three of them die because that was the first wound in the fight phase. So instead of three, two die. Two die. Two die. One takes a wound. Okay. Yes, ignoring the first wound. Uh, so there's two left in your dude. Yeah. Here's, here's the rapier. Rapier. Rapier hits on twos. This will wound on fives okay. because of the minus one strength thing that yep. you do. But sixes are instant death. Okay. So, so another four up invulnerable save, which you make. And a two up save for the for the other one yep. that you make. Uh, and then my Praetor. Yep. He's gonna hit on twos. Yep. I need fives to wound you because red butchers, but okay, sixes yep. do instant death. There's Good another one. instant death, another four up and bun. No. Nope. Which you fail. That's and in the one. end, I haven't cut through them all. There's still your Praetor left and one red butcher. Praetor next at initiative five. So you didn't charge, so none of your bonuses came. No. Nope. 
but you are hitting back on threes. Here we go. And that unit has hatred everything. Sweet. So you re-roll everything. Strength four versus toughness four. Winning on fours. He's shreddy shred. Shreddy shred. And six is rend. Three two up saves. I'm good. And a five up and bun. I'm not good. One takes uh -oh. a wound. Then at initiative one, you have the champion. The champ uh, yes. He's got three attacks, which is four attacks because of his loadout. Yep. He's hit on threes because I did shenanigans with my weapon skill. And he hates me. So he rerolls okay. everything. Yeah. And he hits four times. Uh, three, three times. Three times. Winning on twos. And these are going to cause instant death if I fail any of these. Yep. And I need to make five up saves. And only make one of them. So two of my guys get cut down. I won that combat. Yeah. But you're fearless. Yeah. So we're locked up. In World Eater's turn six, while the Praetor, the Warlord, is locked up in close combat. Khan shouts out some orders and they surge forward to claim their prize. Down here, while the Praetor and the Last Red Butcher are locked in mortal combat with my squad, this unit of despoilers which broke earlier in the game and ran back and ran back and ran back and have been waiting for their, biding their time behind that ruin there, have leapt forward and are stopping me scoring this objective. For now, there is a world in which somehow I don't kill everything here and that prevents me from getting my five points. It's a long shot, but what else are they going to do? Yeah, basically. And there's the Sabre Tank. The Storm Eagle is in hover mode now. So it's not snap firing anymore at it. It's going to be a shot straight into the side armour. In the immobilised Spartan, Khan got out. And he's leapt out. And the Rampager squad are here on this side and the despoiler squad came running forward to smother the objective so right now you've got two units in range of that objective and khan is khan's thinking maybe he still wants to charge something might charge something in a minute we'll <laughs> see and then all the way around this side we have the last contempt of dreadnought that is lining up a nine inch charge and of course remember the last rampager he's still a hero he's still there and if you can lock up this veteran squad and stop them rampaging your rampagers yep that could be a game-winning move as well. So we're going to start the shooting phase down here. Yep. Your Contemptor is firing two Melters at point-blank range into my vet squad. And it hits on twos. And they both hit. And they'll kill on twos. And he wipes out two of them. Now the Spartan, aiming at the Land Raider. We've got a Sponsoon and the Melter that can hit because it's immobilized. Here's the Sponsoons on threes. And it's twin-linked. Both of them hit. Straight to nine. Sundering. Nothing yet, but sundering away. Oh. Nothing. Okay. Multi misser. It's obviously not going to miss. It hits two d six armor pen, armor bane range. That's a penetrating hit at this range. There is no cover. It goes straight through. Does it blow it up? It Boom! Does. It does blow up, and it blows up two inches, which will hurt the Spartan on a six. Doesn't hurt the Spartan. And won't hurt anyone else. And there's uh, nine guys inside that. And they're wounded on twos. And they need three up saves. And two of them die in the explosion. And then they're pinned. Great. And that troop unit. I was keeping it in there for one of my long shots. One of my long shots was Devastators do some devastating wounds somewhere. Yeah. And they come running around and stop you scoring that objective. Yeah. But now they're pinned. Now they're not going anywhere. And Khan and his rampages are yelling at them from the other side of the wall on that ruin there. Okay, Sabre Assault Tank firing at Storm Eagle. Yeah. I am jinking my ass off. Hitting me with the... It hits. It hits. It's strength 10. The Neutron Blaster. It pens. Jinky jink. No cover. I do manage do to jink. jink. Then we'll do the Volkites. Then the Volkites bounce. That is the end of the shooting phase. Now we have to take some leadership tests. Two, four, six. We're good there, but my veterans might fall back. Okay. My veterans don't fall yeah, back, right. which means that they're standing there ready for the charge from your rampager. Yep. Uh, we're going to try and make this disordered. We do make it disordered. Rampager goes nine inches, which is interesting because that's the charge that you need on your dreadnought. I know. <laughs> don't, don't say things like that. 
that's not helpful. <laughs> now we need nine on the dreadnought. And that's a ten. Yes. Now you could charge Khan off into that tactical squad there, but I'll give you a couple of reasons why you shouldn't. One, they're pinned. They can't go anywhere Next anyway. Turn. Ah, and you two, go. you've got two units now holding down yeah. that objective. So Khan, just stay there, taunting them, unless you want to go charging off anyway. Because, I mean, what would Khan do? Well, well, Khan's going in there, I think. Is he? I think so. But okay. if, he, if he goes in there... Yes. That leaves I'm one gonna, unit on the One unit on, but then I can consolidate back four inches. Four inches, initiative-wise. Well, it'll actually be five, because Khan's initiative, Khan's initiative is five. five. And it wouldn't be slowed by terrain. It's so, not slowed by terrain. So the fact that it's a five-inch charge, but it's going to become a seven. But the objective's all the way over it, there. I don't, can you consolidate back no, towards it? No, probably not, but... Hmm. Mm. So you are going to charge, it's just Khan, because you can do some shenanigans yeah, in the charge yeah. phase anyway. So, so it's uh, five so... inches needing a seven. Yes. Yeah. Cool. You yeah. make the charge. And Khan has seven attacks and he hits on threes. And he wounds on threes, because shred five with shred. So re-rolling. And on the fours, it rends and... On a six, uh, basically, there's five Please. dead. He yeah. takes five out on his own, and then we've got like forty attacks to do with the remaining rampages. <laughs> oh, we got, we got five. And they're dead about four times over. And you left the guy strung out here, so when they consolidate back onto the objective, double teaming it one more time. Yep. Khan might be an angry boy, but he's still a captain. Yes, he, he is. He still knows what he's doing. Then we come to the fight with the Contemptor and your Rampager and everything here happens at the same time. I'm going to pile in this dude with his claws. Yep. And what I'm going to do is two of my guys are going to hit your last Rampager. Yep. And the rest hit the, the Dreadnought. The hammer and the claw hit the Dreadnought, yeah. Here are my claws. I need fours to hit you. And that's Ooh, a good rare hit. That is a good rare hit. I need... Forced to wound. He's dead. There was yeah. a rending. Yeah. He's dead. He's dead. But, but he gets he the hits fight. Back. Hits back at the same time on fours. On his way out. And he hits three times. And this will rend on fours. Wound on twos, by the way. So that's a full armor save. And that kills one. That kills one. Yep. And then the dreadnought. But before we do the dreadnought, we're going to do my uh, last little claw hitting your dreadnought guy. And I hit him twice. Uh, I need sixes to rend, but shred. Nope, do nothing to the dread. The dread fights back. He's got six attacks on the charge. He's going to hit on fours. And he hits five times. He's killing on twos and my hammer won't get to strike. Yeah, he wipes out the squad. The dreadnought consolidates. Khan and the despoilers lock down this onslaught objective here. They've kept their bargain. They've uh, followed their orders. They've done what the Praetor wanted them to do. But can the World Eaters Praetor defend against my Praetor and the remaining Terminator attacks down this side of the battle grid? Interestingly, your Praetor can fight at the same time now yep. at initiative five. So threes to hit with all of his attacks. And he hits five times. Really Fours. No, uh, shred, no shred. hatred, no hey. hatred yet, yeah, because that only happens in the first round of combat. Yep. And then forced to wound with the reroll because of shreddy shred. Oh Four. dear. None of them. They're all AP3. Oh, so none see. of them rend. So I do get my top Terminator saves. And one of them takes a wound. Here's all the Phoenix Power Spears. I still get plus one to hit with uh, Marta or this man. Yep. So instead of hitting you on threes because Red Butchers, I'm hitting you on twos. twos. Um, yeah. All and extra I've done and skill attacks. unmatched as well, so I get extra attacks one more time. These are the rapiers. Two. And then threes to win, but really looking for those sixes for that murderous strike. Yeah. One murderous strike. Ooh. Interestingly, you ignore the first damage oh. that comes through. You can ignore that one. I can. Then these are all two up saves. And you only take a wound. a wound. Then I've got a rapier, uh, which hits you three times. Yeah. No murder strikes doesn't do anything. Nothing. Basically, 
You've got you've... five points right now. Yeah. I haven't got any. It comes down to my Praetor killing you. Yeah. If to my get Praetor... Slay the Warlord. To oh, get no. Slay the Warlord and take this objective. If I fail to do this. Mind you, I've got another turn. You have I've got, got turn you, six. You have got your turn. I've got another turn. It's not over yet. I was thinking maybe this is the game winning yeah. thing. Not he quite. hits on twos. He's going to win on fives because Ravening Man Man thing. And that's two instant deaths. Oh, that two is four two up four invulnerable ops. saves. Or we clear away the red butchers. Makes One's turns. alive. Here we go. No! Come so, on, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the last of the red butchers falls. And it's just your Praetor, surrounded by all of my dudes. That is the end of World Eater's turn five, uh, six. So I need to score this objective. Yep. You've got five points. If I score this objective, I get five points. I have to kill him, and I have to kill them. Yeah. Uh, what I was hoping is, these were dead in close combat. And you could just move on. And then I could charge and kill them. Done. But now it's not a done deal. Now I need to somehow kill them with shooting, and kill him in close combat. Then you get five points, I get five points, and then we add up all the other points that we, we might we, get. And the weird thing is that leaves you, you'll gain an extra one above me for Slay the Warlord, but I'm an extra one from you from turn one. Yes. So we do literally come down to who's killed more. It's going to come down to the last dice roll. <laughs> Let's see if that unit there regroups. No, run away. We regroup. That's important because yeah. killing more, because units that are pinned or falling back at the end of the game count yeah. as destroy units. They're going to be snap firing. They're going to be out of the fight. Uh, right. Let's try and pivot round and see as many how many guns I can get into bear as we go to World Eaters turn. No, Emperor's Children turn six. I'm getting excited. Turn oh. six. Okay, so we regrouped with the dudes and I fired at your dudes and did nothing because we were snap firing. Yep. So now we're going on to Devastators. There are six Devastators that can see that squad. But I can't see that one behind the Sabre tank. Yeah. So he cannot be removed as a casualty. Do you want to shroud this or the shots coming in from the Storm Eagle? Probably this. This, this is more shots. This is more shots, yeah. Yeah. Three to hit, yeah. I only hit twice. Oh, no. Two's to wound you. Of course it's double one. No. I wound you twice, which means wound you once. So six up cover save. And then a five up shroud. That's some good winter's head. That is some good winter's head. Okay. Let's fire the Storm Eagle in. Missile launchers coming in hot. And that one scatters two inches backwards. Next shot. Scatters three inches backwards. So only hit two. I wound one. So, tanking on Artificer. Uh, no, they're not. Oh, no, there's the no Artificer there. The artificer. Yeah, so three up safe. No, nope. one Not dies, one. and now we have three twin link weapons, anti tank weapons coming into them, which are twin linked, and only two here. Two wounds, intervening models, so two six up saves, and another one dies, and that's the end of my shooting phase. And I've killed two, and they're still on that objective. But that's more than 25% of the squad. Yes, and there's no sergeant. So leadership seven. Basically, James, no pressure here. If you pass this, you've won the game. Because they'll be in range of that objective. Yeah, Even if I kill easy. your warlord, yeah. you'll stop me scoring this one. So this is to win seven or less. It's not a reroll for a pre a no. or is it? It's just the distance. Yes. Oh! And that's a seven... The hero <laughs> squad stand firm. Let's go through this combat, see what happens. Then we ran through the combat. I did slaughter your you warlord. You absolutely cut him to pieces. <laughs> uh, so I get one point for killing your warlord and one point in turn one. Yep. So I got two points. You got five points for holding on to that objective. Yep. Two in turn one. Yep. And two for killing, okay. uh, one point for killing more. So you end up with eight, eight. points. It's a really close game. Uh, killing more was only by one point as well. Yeah. So here's the thing. If that unit had died or fell back, yeah. you wouldn't have got your one point for killing more. Yeah. And I would have taken that objective and it would have been a draw. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's always so brutally close. Just that unit holding on there. It's meant that this is a victory for the world eaters. And this is the way the world ends. Uh... 
Uh, just heresy things. Heresy, mate. It always I love steps it. down it's to the low savage. I think the, the big what's it there was them not wiping the red butchers when they went in. Yeah. Leaving lots, those two alive. Yeah. And and all right, we thought two might survive, but then surviving another round of combat yeah. was huge. Yeah. Last turn, if I hadn't have whiffed that and killed them, then mm -hmm. I would have gone into that's another way of drawing the game. I'd have slaughtered them. Yeah. Uh yeah. Just, <laughs> it gets to the end and there's just not enough guns left, is there? No. That's basically what it comes down to. There is just not enough guns left at the end of the game. I tell you what, Phalax blades that rampages have, these are basically bill hooks and they're they're weapons that are designed to inflict maximum damage, right? Yeah. To dismember they're brutal. Well they are power weapons as well. Yeah. In, in the bit about them, they are like power machetes. They're not just like improvised weapons. No. So they they're, are, yeah. Well, they're a legion that has uh, developed weapons to do the most amount of exactly. damage as possible and then run energy fields through them. <laughs> yeah. It's very well leaders thing. I'm glad we got to see what Khan did. Yes. We didn't necessarily see what, get to see what your Praetor did on the charge because he just got charged. No. But um, we did get to see uh, Red Butchers, which are really tanky, really fearless. Just take it and take it and take it. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? After it is. turn one or two, I thought it was all over. To be honest, yeah, me, I, I, I was a bit like, oh, 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 what do uh -oh. we do? Because um, we had the discussion. We were like, well, if you'd not left eight hundred points up in the air flying about, and then it turned out I'd got a thousand points, sat down here doing nothing, waiting for each other. So your two dreadnoughts from the Terminators. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, in the, you didn't, yeah. you didn't leave that thousand points down there. No. In the end, one well, of them came. He, he, he hot footed it the whole way up the table, didn't yeah. he? Because yeah. another thing that I could have done is if I charge in with vets and somehow they pass morale or something. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. I could have just charged the unit of despoilers instead. Yeah. yeah. And then stop you scoring that objective. So actually him hot-footing it up the table and stopping the second unit of vets. Yeah, jumping in. Game-winning movement there. Um, I love heresy. It's uh, See, Warhammer 40k is... It's a war game, but also a strategy game with all the stratagems and with all the things and da da da. But Horus Heresy just feels just like a war game. Yeah. With pinning, with and falling stuff really back. Goes with... Wrong. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it when stuff goes wrong, both for me and for my opponent. Yeah. I, like the land raider blowing up and the yeah. guys falling back and then falling back again. Yeah. You have no control over that, but it's a war. Yeah, game. Exactly. So those things happen. Things getting pinned, like your saber tank here. Getting yeah. pinned straight away. Someone at some point always gets immobilized at some point. My uh, Storm mm. Eagle not coming in into turn four. See, that's another thing. If it had come in in a turn early, then again, I could have swept through this and started doing some damage. You might have, but I had more stuff on the table. Calm might have been sat here. You might have dropped them. Calm might have charged in and it might have completely gone the other way. And it might, and I might have lost this objective but denied use that you don't know. It's, I don't yeah, know. I'm going to tell you what, I'm always worried about the counter charge from Khan. Yeah. Who isn't? It's Khan. Yeah. I mean, even Loken ran away from him on his round three. You just, if it wasn't for that pesky land raider that yeah, skewered exactly. him, that would be a dead Loken. And uh, Loken is an absolute G. Um, yeah, another glorious game of Horus Heresy. Thank you, James, March of War uk for coming all the way down. Thank these you statues me. are available, all these things, all the stuff and things. Um, and uh, commission, just email yeah. you and Give let me you know. Yeah. Let you should know. Tell me up on the Discord or whatever, I'm in yours. But this was filmed before March of Winners. Yes. Which is happening at the 1st of October. It is, not long away now. And we're thinking about doing one next year as well. Yes. So we I'm are. really looking forward to that. So everyone out there who's got tickets to March of Winters at Element Games, look forward to seeing you there. Yes, we will. Where one of the big prizes is a full table of scenery like this. Not this. I need yeah. to figure out. Work out what you <laughs> yeah, definitely. But... With the battle map, we're giving away there. So I look forward to seeing everyone there. And if you made it to this far in the video, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, Thanks comment, share. Great game. No, thank, thank you. you for Thanks for coming all the way down. So much fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, comment, share, subscribe, become a member, all that good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Happy definitely. War Gaming.